L'importance des principes du développement. The importance of the principles of sustainable development has considerably decreased in public policies to the detriment of more uh, sectoral based approaches based on indicators. Through these transformations of public policy, the rise of centralized and sectoral urban policies, a certain number of movements and collectives in civil society are developing initiatives based on cooperation. These recent evolutions of collective and individual militancy confirm a displacement, a shift from social militancy based on the idea of reforming society towards militancy that is more community-based. It denounces a vision of the world that refuses to take into consideration the Earth as a finite environment which human beings occupy and live in through their relationships with all other living species. This evolution produces yet another evolution, which I believe means we can talk about ordinary environmentalism. This is a shift of the scope within the public debate. What counts, what has changed, as witnessed by a focus on relations with the environment, with uh, the living environment, the quality of life. And this goes with a renewal of both militant action and government action. There's an extension of the number of people involved in public decision making, but also a greater variety of resources and means in the struggle through the expansions of uh, uh, their aesthetics, happenings, uh, festive events, uh, testimonials, and the increasing involvement of artists. How can one describe in a few words the recent history of these environmental mobilizations? First of all, in the 60s and 70s, the first movement expressing a true transformation of cultures, um, of uh, nature, of the countryside, and of cities. These new social movements give rise to global environmentalist movements starting in the 1970s, uh, such as Earth First, Greenpeace, Les Amis de la Terre, Friends of the Earth, or the WWF, which emerge in the United States um, in the wake of the civil rights movement and expand more broadly uh, across Europe. In parallel, a great number of local initiatives emerge, either uh, anti-war, anti-nuclear demonstrations. Starting in the 1980s, these NGOs become increasingly professionalized. They start to be involved in municipalities and local policy, to the point that they are now called the militant experts. These municipal policies then gradually factor in environmental concerns based on concerns on the quality of life and living environment. In the 90s, starting with the Green Book, the European Environment and the Rio Summit in 1992, there is a rise in the injunctions, in the factoring in of environmental aspects, which uh, lastingly transforms the role of NGOs in the public decision-making process and in the communities. Uh, 2000, 2010, prior to the Grenelle de l'Environnement, there is a period of integration, of onboarding of NGOs into technical and scientific negotiation processes, both on the national level and on the local level, and notably in the regions. This reflects an institutionalization of militancy. 
Starting in 2010 and up to now, militant groups become more diverse and multiple with radical initiatives of civil disobedience or squatting, direct action, uh, the ad busters or anti-specious, anti-vivisection movements or those who are fighting against suffering in abattoirs. And on the other hand, other groups who have all alternate degrowth, uh, returning to nature with these eco-villages, but also um, more peaceful conventional movements which uh, fight or dialogue with local authorities and private stakeholders. So there is either radical militancy through direct action or counter expertise, alternative practices, or awareness raising and education initiatives aimed to local communities. This can be analyzed as various forms of grammar of political action reflecting modalities of engagement and transformation characterized by experimentations that are creative and sometimes risky through cooperatives of habitats, eco-locations, or positive energy territories. So how do these collectives, which are very diverse and constituted based on life experiences, how can they create uh, this sense of attachment to a local uh, community? And how can this be placed at the heart of the environmental transition? Perhaps it reflects the fact that they see themselves as guarantors, as stewards of nature that they feel is threatened and depends on the local action, and narrowly connected to the idea to their notion of happy life um, in a particular location and more broadly on planet Earth. A number of research initiatives, uh, especially on the other side of the Atlantic, have uh, studied this environmental stewardship concept where uh, people serve as stewards, as guardians of their environment. And this increases the visibility of citizen contribution to the ecology of uh, the environment. They conserve or monitor or, or demonstrate and struggle um, in a large number of aspects. And in this movement, which aims to increase the visibility of what is important to this attachment to the places where people live, there is the sense and sensibility often overlooked in the analysis of the grammar of political action and which uh, exists in the collective representation of places and spaces with through territorialized practices. One can talk about environmental aesthetics to reflect the manner in which these collectives state the economic disaster through life stories in the territories rather than as a problem requiring a solution through the use of techniques. So it's an aesthetics that goes beyond art and museums and art galleries, but aesthetics that comes to life in the public space, in the natural space, and which calls upon this experience in environmental transformation. So the issue is to advance ideas of experience, pay attention to the ordinary, to uh, the daily aspects of the experience, and to focus on the environmental forms, uh, neighborhoods, parks, all sorts of forms, including balconies, and environmental processes. Environmental aesthetics aims to determine how a sense of community can emerge through the creation of shared environmental aesthetics collectively, how one can feel and sense the environment at the crossroads of sense and the senses of theory and practice. 
One final manner in which one can analyze the manner in which these collectives emerge in communities is to see what governance systems they fall within. In truth, the era of governance is emerging with environmental policies, and this started at the start of this century and perhaps a little before, with the advancement of contractual mechanisms connecting the state and various stakeholders to encourage involvement of new uh, NGOs or citizens' groups in these governance systems. Uh, from then on, we could see that not only do NGOs transform, learn from their relationship with local governments, but conversely, these uh, institutions with a strong local presence are also transforming. They, it's a kind of a wildening of the situation of the institutions. These various graphs will show you how one can analyze uh, the governance in the territories by seeing how NGOs and uh, stakeholders in local government, but also the central government, are interconnected and form a network. And through this graph, you can see which are the most interconnected groups or the most isolated groups and NGOs who remain aside of uh, and refuse any association with the public sphere. And uh, how do these uh, NGO groups work? This pilot research in Plaine Commune conducted in 2015-2016 evidenced these NGO networks in the community itself and evidenced how local government was deeply involved in structuring these groups on the local level. This final graph gives a depiction of the diversity of visions that exist between NGOs, scientific representations, and local and central governments in each territory. The first diagram shows an NGO here on the territory of Plaine Commune and the fact that this stakeholder is more specifically focused in the dynamics of interaction with the local population and territorialized stakeholders. While a second player, the SAFA here, is much more interested in um, urban development aspects and setting aside uh, plots of land for urban agriculture which is difficult to preserve, especially uh, in the perspective of the Greater Paris project. So this shows how these various representations can intersect in a territory or create problems when they turn out to be a kind of Tower of Babel, which produces conflict and misunderstanding in the territories more than negotiation.